Alright, time for another draftphysics.com. Debate physics also, but, you know, yeah. I can only do my part. Can't do their part for them. So there won't be any counter arguments to anything I'm suggesting. And uh, they don't pay any attention to the arguments against what they suggest. So the Steve Mold guy has done a, frankly, <laughs> a commercial for some. Um, Go starter or starter go thing, <laughs> whatever the hell it is. Jump starter, some kind of whatever. Um, <sighs> some sort of weird website, apparently, where you help people become evil, exploitness capitalists or something. I don't know. Just sounds like a really bad idea to me. Anyway, <laughs> oh, God, I hate this planet. Anyway. So there's this Veritasium video where Veritasium is attempting to suggest that it's something about the fields that makes the electricity go. Fields are fields of something. Anyway, um, you know, in that uh, electricity isn't basically a function of electrons being pushed. It's charge in the wire. Uh, and the frankly, the simple answer is that when you charge the atoms, you change the shape of the atoms, and that makes them a little bit more magnetic, and that creates induction in other metals that might be around that can, um, you know, have magnetism induced in them, electricity. All right, so anyway, um, so I, I would argue there's a, a, a more precise and, and rational way to understand how uh, electricity moves in a wire. And so... The way they generally do it, to say if you wanted to just explain it in the shortest, quickest, simplest way possible, you just use this pressure argument. And, but it's not very perfect because it's, you know, the, the analogy doesn't work because there's, you know, there's mechanical mechanisms that aren't exactly the same. And so you're basically showing how wattage works in a sense because you really can't make the distinction between voltage and amperage. You can just make this distinction about a certain volume of water will go through the, the hose and come out the other end. Um, and it really doesn't, uh, it doesn't, well, it has some parallels. I mean, it does show voltage a little bit in terms of velocity. You can shoot the water out with a higher pressure and that would be equatable to uh, voltage and a volume which would equate to to amperage so it's not that imperfect either anyway all right so we just play this because he's, he ends up just making you know falling for the same bullshit video and you're just why are you changing something that works i mean this works as an analogy I would argue there would be uh, more. There's probably more ideal ways to turn it into a mechanical system, and then the whole point is this: this guy's going to defend a toy, and it's just a toy, okay, um, that mechanically is doing exactly what he's saying. The Veritasium video says we shouldn't be doing because it's not accurate. So there's just overt irony in him bringing up the Veritasium video and saying, well, look, you're doing it wrong. You're thinking about it wrong. You're analogizing it wrong. Well, here's another toy to do it wrong. About electronic circuits. But instead of water being pushed through pipes, it's a chain that's being pulled and it's pulling on different components. This is probably a good time to address the Veritasium shaped elephant in the room. You probably so 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 he's not really going to address it in any other way and say something like, "Yes, Veritasium's correct, but who cares?" <laughs> or something like that. And Veritasium's wrong. So his video where he talks about how electronic circuits really work is the one. So so really work again. This this rhetoric. It's just ugh, it's disgusting. Uh, the induction is a symptom of the electricity in the wire. It's a symptom. It's a tiny symptom. The energy isn't conveyed by magical forces flying through the air. Okay, it's conveyed by pressure being pushed between electrons in the wire. That's the bulk of the energy. And there's just a tiny symptom to the rest of the world that yes, when you change what's happening in one wire, the effect of that change is it's in, an, it's in this universe and this universe is full of stuff. And yes, the stuff conveys a symptom to the other wire. 
but it's not the bulk of the electricity. It's a tiny fraction of the power and it's not even taking any energy from the system. On about the circuit that's a light second in length, it's a really important video, actually two videos, because it's not, you know, it's really important if you want to understand just how physics goes wrong, is that it finds a tiny correlation between something and then it turns it into the cause, you know, and it, it, and it makes declarations about how it proved. It's terrible what they do in physics a follow-up that I recommend you watch if you haven't already because he clears a few things up yeah yeah he so he says a bunch of crap in the first video that's really wrong and then he qualifies his crap in the second video but still asserts that this is somehow relevant when no it's really not relevant at all I mean it really is more he causes more misinformation he produces more misinformation than valid information Important videos because it's important to keep in mind what's really going on beneath. Yeah, see, <laughs> so they're going to just keep saying that. Keep, uh, keep in mind what's really going on. What's really important? You know, no, it's not the real part. It's the fake, silly. You know, in, indulge the people who need to think it's all magical. BS. The models that we have in our heads. Right, and the models are all broken anyway because uh, your Maxwell equations are all screwed up because you still haven't fixed plus and minus being assigned wrong. And the assignment is sort of important because the, f the fact is, is that electrons are electricity uh, in the sense that those are the things you're moving because the atoms are basically stationary, which means all the protons really aren't going anywhere. So you're just moving electrons. And uh, having electrons with a minus on them doesn't make much sense because the fact is they're probably going to be adding and subtracting just electrons. Of how things work. In the videos, he explains that the energy in a circuit is carried by the electric and magnetic fields that hug. So, so it, it's not carried by in any sense of any field that's moving and then the electrons are just in the way of the field. The fact is that each electron is its own field. And even when you're pushing water, you're pushing electrons. It just happens that in the case of water, they're stuck to the other water molecule, the rest of the atom, and the whole atom is moving. So you're moving atoms of water instead of just, if you solidified the water and recognized that, okay, I can't move the whole atoms anymore, <laughs> you're still just moving the electrons and that's the distinction so it's it's just saying okay if I solidified the water and make it conductive it just means that now I can push electrons I can't push the whole atoms but I can push the electrons and so it's the same analogy the same function is really happening and what everybody should kind of understand is is that electrons are charge and charges don't ever touch each other because there's too much repulsion between like charges. So electrons don't really hit each other. They sit there and they compress a field between them. And the compression of the energy between them is what pushes them back apart. It's the spring. And the spring has to be made out of something. So you could argue that, well, it sort of just proves that there's a bunch of energy in the empty space. The empty space isn't some empty space with nothing in it. It certainly doesn't have an ether in it. But <laughs> the point is, is the empty space has little bits of quantized energy in it. It has photons. The makings of a photon is what exists between the electrons. So I don't know how productive it would be, where I should start, you know, giving the alternative drawing. Maybe we'll just play through his video and then I'll do the, oh, here's a better explanation thing. The wires and components of the circuit. And that kind of puts the lie to the hydrodynamic model. So it doesn't put it as a lie. So that's kind of wrong. And all you really have to understand is that the distinction between amperage and voltage and why it's happening and so I could illustrate it as magnets as I've said before right you take a bunch of magnets and let's say you put them inside of a tube where they can't flip right so you have them all north facing all repelling each other all right and you can just understand that if you push one magnet the other magnets are all going to move all right and that's what the electrons are doing the same thing uh, you push hard that it moves fast you push 
lightly, it moves slow. I mean, you know, pressure, amperage. See, but you can't do amperage because, yeah, it gets more complicated because you're moving more magnets slowly in the case of <clears throat> um, high amperage. Well, you're not necessarily slowly. If you had the same wattage, then it would be slowly. But the fact is, amperage is how many electrons you're moving. All right, and voltage is how fast are you moving them. And the speed of the electron is a tiny percentage of the speed of light. So the whole point is, is that the fact that you move the electron, you're not really measuring that speed because that speed is, uh, you know, you can't, it's, it's a tiny percentage of the total speed of the thing getting through the, the wire because most of the force is moving, the force is moving the speed of light. So obviously it's conveying the movement. So it's a tiny movement in the electron is a tiny percentage of the overall speed that the voltage takes to get through the wire. So you're not going to be able to tell the difference between 10 volts and 10,000 volts because frankly the amount of movement of the electron is so tiny you can't extract that tiny difference out of the speed of light. Doesn't it? Because if you only have that you know, water flowing through pipes image in your head, then you're thinking, okay, so I push water at this end of the pipe, which pushes on the water next to it, which pushes on the water next to it, which pushes on the water next to it. Right, and if you just said, instead of saying that, you said pushed on the atoms, okay? So the whole atoms are moving. And we know in a wire, the whole atoms aren't moving, but the electrons are. Until this bit of water falls out the other end of the pipe, and that bit of water can be used to do work. Yeah, and if so it's a perfectly good analogy in the sense that, yes, you're creating pressure, the pressure is moving through a system, and it comes out the other end. And the great thing about electricity is, is yeah, it doesn't lose too much. If that's the only model that you have, then you might think, well, it's the same with electrons. I'm pushing the electrons with a voltage through this end of the wire, which pushes on... Right, but you're pushing with a voltage. So again, what's the distinction between pushing with a voltage and pushing with an amperage? Well, the difference is, is how many electrons are moving. And that's amperage. And voltage is how fast are they moving? How extreme is the push? Is, you know, is the electron doing this or is the electron doing this? The electrons in front of it, which pushes on the electrons in front of it, until eventually these electrons at the end, they could be pushed out of the wire and do work. But that's not how it works. Okay, so he's saying it's not how it works when, yes, no, that's pretty much a really good analogy for how it works. That is how it works. There's nothing wrong with it. Any symptom being created. Let's just say that that plastic tube got a little bit fatter. All right. And let's say that we put that in a tank of water. So we have the plastic tube with water in it. The plastic tube gets a little fatter when you push something through it. Well, then it's going to push on the water. Right. And I could have another tube. And the other tube would get compressed a little bit because you are now pushing on the fluid between the two tubes and the other tube gets compressed a little bit and that compression causes pressure in that tube. Yes, so the induction of the electricity is pretty much, it's a good enough metaphor, it's doing the same thing. There's a field between the two wires, their atoms are still communicating with each other, they're pretty far apart so they're not communicating very well and the fact is you're just creating the same field that the electrons are surrounded by is when they're radiating everywhere. So the sunlight hits the, the Earth. It also hits Saturn, okay? It just hits it with a lot less light. A lot less. The energy is carried by the electric and magnetic fields. Those so again, the energy is carried by the fields. It really isn't. It's carried by the motion of the electron and you move the sun, you move the field. I mean, you know, you really wouldn't say, I don't think I would say it, that there's some field that's carrying sunlight. No, the sunlight is being produced by the sun, all right? And if it was pressure, if it was water it was producing, or the motion of electrons, this wouldn't be that complicated.
But to be fair to the electrons, those electric and magnetic fields belong to the electrons. So, okay, so there you go. So, yes, yeah, so, so why don't you make that argument explicitly and say, why are we talking about some ambiguous field when we all we, all we know is is that it's the Maxwell drawing kind of thing. It's an inverse square relationship. It's each electron is producing a pressure around it that is repulsive to each other okay that pushes on other electrons so as the universe pushes on the electron and ref and the electron reflects that field obviously the closer i bring two electrons the more pressure is going to be between them but they're not making okay they they really aren't burning nuclear or something okay to create the field <laughs> the field is just this fluid in the in the system the heat in the system the heat in space and when the heat's caught between two electrons, it can't go into either one. And so it increases the pressure. They get, it gets hot between them, you could almost argue. So it is kind of fair to say that it's the electrons that are carrying the energy. It's just... Uh, okay, so, so he won't... So again, it's just such a weak counter-argument he's making. Well, it's kind of like, he, he is bullshit, but... No, I'm not going to call bullshit. Just that they're not pushing on each other in the way that... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they never hit each other. Okay, so that happens every time one atom combines or, or interacts with another atom where it doesn't share the electron, you know, where it doesn't become a, a new molecule. In every t one of those circumstances, you could argue the electrons are bouncing off of each other. The electron pressure is the pressure that keeps the atoms apart. Every atom has electrons on the outside. The electrons won't allow them to get too close to each other, and that's why you have to usually push something fast into another thing to create a, a, a to force them into a molecular form where they're sharing an electron. You have to push an electron out, okay, where and then replace it with one that'll be shared by both atoms. Oh, man, you know, well, whatever that the water in a pipe model might be. <clears throat> okay let's see so he doesn't say this but let's see but in an electric transmission line the energy flows as fields in the space surrounding the wires no that's a symptom it's just a symptom what's happening in the wire is a hell of a lot more intense <laughs> The pressure inside the wire is insanely intense compared to the little bit that leaks out to the rest of the world. So again, if I put two suns next to each other, it's going to be insanely hot between the two suns. And yes, they're throwing stuff into the rest of the field, but who cares, right? It's totally uninteresting compared to the amount of heat you're creating between the two suns. Anyway, uh, the space surrounding the wires and does not flow inside the metal. So just amazing. It does not flow inside the metal. Of course it flows inside the metal. Of course there's a, an intense amount of pressure between the electrons inside the metal. That's why the electrons are moving. They're being pushed by the field pressure. lead you to believe but to make a broader philosophical point like everything we know in science is just models even right and it would be good ideas to get the right model to actually understand what's happening and so don't be fooled by silly equations that don't make any sense like one half mv squared which i'll throw in here i have in the past i think written him on that subject that couldn't you just investigate it couldn't you just look into it because the history is so bad, come on, wake up, smell the shit that you're believing. But no, 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 no response. Quantum mechanics is just a model, and it's wrong in the sense that we know it's not a true description. I just love that. Oh, we know it's wrong, but we will, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's just... And why does he think it's wrong? Because it doesn't agree with relativity, which is the joke, because that's the one on the chopping block. That's the... That's the quackadoodle or crocoduck. I mean, that's the almost religious theory. You know, oh, there's no absolute space. There's four dimensions. That's the one with full of crap. So if you're going to kill one of these stupid theories, that would be the one you kill first. And you keep the quantum mechanics. 
description of the universe because it doesn't play well with relativity. But we still use quantum. Uh, so it's not that relativity doesn't play well with quantum mechanics, right? So, you know, it's an obvious prejudice. You're just saying, why are you on the side of relativity theories? Like, I mean, you know, you have still haven't repeated the Eddington experiment with 400 times better resolution from space. Yeah. To mechanics because it's insanely accurate under okay so they always say that it's insanely accurate at doing what what exactly did it do that's so freaking accurate it, it's not insanely accurate i can show just uh, even on two slit experiments that it can't insanely accurately predict so what where is all this insane accuracy coming from i mean where, where do they come up with this notion that it's insanely accurate all mathematics has to be pretty insanely consistent I mean, 2 plus 2 you know, over here has to equal 2 plus 2 over there. Um, you know, some of the functions and some of the, the parts of math guarantee consistency. But, yeah, getting a consistently wrong answer isn't what you call accuracy. Most circumstances. So you might have the water in a pipe model of electric circuits in your head, but it's important to know that underneath that, it's the electric and magnetic fields that are carrying the energy. Okay, so you said it's not, and then you said it is. So you, you wishy and you washy, and you wishy and you, you know, it's just all bullshit, right? Uh, and so what did you just say to everybody? Did you say anything at all? Well, it's a good analogy, but it's a bad analogy. Well, it's a good analogy and because you know it goes through the wire no doubt about that well you know but obviously it's not going in the wire i mean look i i showed you that little bit of text that says that the the wire doesn't carry any electricity so i threw that in just for fun come on but even that's a model, right? I mean, it's models all the way down. But the point is, when you're doing science, you pick the model that is most appropriate for the thing that you're doing. Oh, this fuck, you know, isn't that just amazing? No, that's just, that's how you make mistakes. That's how you get into all kinds of trouble is when you decide that, well, we'll just change the rules to the circumstance and we'll leave it all kind of mushy and pretend that the universe gives us a different fundamental elemental structure for whatever we're doing. And that's, that is just as bad as it gets. I mean, you know, you don't do that with any other theories. You certainly don't do it to evolution or something and say, well, I'll just throw out the DNA molecule and replace it with some other uh, mechanism that's deciding, you know. You know, well, they do do that to some extent, right? They have mind, body, duality or something because we have a few glands that create hormones you know in our armpits or something that somehow we're going to say our body is controlling our brain when no those are just part of the function of the brain <laughs> you know come on get real that's the water the brain is swimming in mechanical circuit model is good for intuition as well so let's explore some of those this all right so <clears throat> he saw this gimmick on something and again who this would be interesting to i don't understand exactly just because it's just a toy it's just for kids maybe but i still think it just gives them the wrong impression because this isn't how it works this isn't the field stuff okay this isn't going to show you a field it's not going to show you the pressure between electrons it's not going to show you any of that stuff so in my opinion you're better off playing with the magnets because the magnets are an overt demonstration of charge it's an overtly telling you look there's invisible stuff between these things and the invisible stuff between them is the medium the catalyst for any kind of movement between them All right. So I'll start doing my drawing part and we'll see if how I'll attempt to do it as efficiently as possible. But, you know, it's a, it's a real subject, it's, you know, it's it's a real subject. And so it takes a little bit of context and all of that crap to get to it. All right, so we'll have to move this over, I think. And this should be good enough. Almost. I could probably go over a little bit more. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's close enough. All right. So um, my argument is all right. So let me just make a really big wire, and we'll just say what's happening inside the wire. Okay. 
So unlike the water analogy, we know that metals, the atoms aren't going anywhere, right? So you could just say they're kind of stuck in a position and they can vibrate or move a little bit, but they can't do much. All right, and that they all have electrons on them, you know, and they're all bound together and they're pretty rigid. I mean, they're sharing electrons. And the water was doing that to some extent too, right? I mean, that's why you can't compress the water is because it's already bound. All the molecules are stuck to each other. So all you, you know, you're really stuck with the idea that all you can really do is push on an electron and misshapen the atoms, change their shape. I mean, that's what you're going to end up doing because it's a really locked in system. And so the simple way to understand it, as I said, is with this north-south magnet thing. If I have a north magnet, a little round magnet, and a little round magnet, and I put them north side to north side, okay, it's known that I, you know, I push this one, I'm going to end up pushing this one. And that it will, if I have it in a frictionless environment, you can understand it'll push it quite perfectly. That is, whatever movement I give this one, you know, it could be any kind of shape of movement that this one's going to duplicate the shape of that movement. You know, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, I'll duplicate it in the other one. So, in the, the water analogy of just pushing water, well, obviously the molecules are moving. Okay, the whole atoms are getting pushed. So, I push a, a, some atoms in and it'll, you know, move all kinds of atoms all over the place. They'll bang into each other, they'll bang into the walls, they'll do all kinds of things. All right, and the argument is, is in a metal, you're not going to do all that, right? What you're going to do is you're going <clears> to, <throat> you can have an electron hit another electron. It pushes on it. That means this electron pushes on this one. This electron pushes on this one, which means this electron goes this way, and this electron goes that way, and this electron goes that way. So any pressure I create obviously pushes the electrons on the outside out. So as I add electrons, I'm essentially going to expand the atoms a little bit. I'm going to change their shape. They're going to go from being round atoms to being this shape of atom. And guess what? When they're this shape of atom, they're now polarized. This will be negative, this will be positive kind of thing. Well, it'll be the other way around. This will be negative and these two sides will be positive. You're changing it into a tripole. All right, and that's what you're really seeing, okay, when the wire does this thing, the rest of this universe looking this way is saying, what does this wire look like? Well, it looks different when the atoms are this shape than when the atoms are this shape. So any change in the atoms changes what's happening coming out of this wire. So like I said, if it was purple, it's changing to either blue, it's getting bluer or it's getting redder, right? So a simple way of looking at it is that way. All right, that you're just basically going to change whether it looks positive like a proton or whether it looks like an, an electron. And that's the change in the field. Okay, the electricity is changing the field by changing the atoms, which are changing what's reflecting off of this surface. So the surface goes from looking flat, you could say, and then the surface gets... Um, <sighs> I don't know how to make the distinction between plus and minus, but lumpy. You know, it changes the surface, which means it's changing what the field is doing when it's reflecting off the wire, which is essentially just changing my shirt color. So when electricity is going through me, if I was a wire, it would mean that my shirt changes to color, changes to red or changes to uh, plaid. <laughs> okay. And anything looking at it, that is anything <clears throat> being affected by what this wire is producing, these atoms are going to feel the same thing. So if this atom starts producing electron pressure in different locations, right? There was electron pressure, say, here, and now I've moved it to over here, okay? So I've moved a negative magnet from one position to another position. Well, if there's another negative magnet over here, he's going to see that change, and he's going to be moved by it, right? So if I change the position of a negative magnet in space, there's an influence on all the other negative magnets that are within the realm of reach of that magnetic field. And they'll all be affected by it in the sense that they'll give them a tendency to move. All right? and that's the induction part. So the induction part is just a consequence of you pushing on the electrons. And the point would be, is like I said, in the water, all these atoms start going all over the place, blah, 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 blah. What I would argue happens in a metal, okay, is that you can put the voltage in, like say I can move an electron really fast and hit, hit, I'll hit some electron. And the fact is because all these, mole these atoms are lined up with each other in a crystal, the fact is, is that that pressure will just go through 
rather efficiently. Now, it's there's some inefficiency. Until you get to a superconductor, you're still going to have some misalignments. All of these little electrons are vibrating. Okay, that's why that's why superconductors are cold. This is you're taking the vibration out. You're slowing down the amount of vibration in the electrons. So you're taking away some of the inefficient motion. Just, you know, like this, you know, seeing through a hand that's vibrating, you're going to not going to see too well. You're not going to have a perfectly straight line. So if I'm trying to go through vibrating electrons, my line's going to wiggle. Well, if I want my line to be straight and I want it to be the fastest it can be, then it doesn't wiggle. So the fact is, is we already know that the, the electricity moves through the wire at like, you know, 85% of the speed of light, something like that. It's not even that close, frankly, when they measure it. It's really a lot less than the speed of light. So we have this impression that electricity moves through wires at the speed of light, but no, it doesn't really do that. And it's just like you could argue that in fiber optic cables, it's a lot slower than the speed of light because the light's bouncing off the sides of the cable. It's obviously not a straight line. So it's a damn, a lot slower than the speed of light. I mean, you could just think of this logically, right? There's no way I could go through a fiber optic cable at the speed of light if I'm doing this. <laughs> right? I mean, obviously the light's going the speed of light, but I'm not doing the speed of light this way. The signal certainly can't be moving the speed of light. So it'd be completely, you'd be proving that there's faster than light speed motion because you know the fiber optic cable can't work by sending the light straight. It has to bounce it. That's the whole way it works. So, um, so the idea is it's a high voltage can get through the wire straight it just goes through a few of these things and that's it or you can have a higher amperage which means you have a lower pressure like half the speed and you hit more than one electron and then it goes through more atoms and the trick is if you're trying to get the inductive effect well you have the lower voltage you know you want this the high wattage but you want it to be an amperage you want it to be moving the most electrons as possible because you want to misshape as many atoms as possible. So a high voltage can go through the wire and just misshape in, uh, you know, 10 atoms or whatever. Uh, an amperage with the same wattage would misshape in, you know, 10 atoms worth, you know, at a one voltage, at a one pressure. So it's got 10 atoms moving. So, I mean, it's affecting, it's changing the shape of 10 atoms. So that's why the low voltage at high amperage creates more magnetic induction. So that's the that's why it does is because yes, you want to affect as many atoms as possible to create the surface that looks different. So if you want to change my shirt, you use amperage, not voltage. <sighs> change the shirt color. Um, all right, so do I really have to say that much more? So that's what's really happening. Though. You're just pushing on electrons. Electrons are uh, communicating with each other. That's transferring, okay, the pressure on the electron. And because it's a metal, you can put high voltages through it because you can hit one electron and that'll pretty much go straight through the wire. Okay, whereas, um, you know, you can have a lot of electron motion that is, I can connect another wire that has a lot of electrons moving, you know, wanting to move, and they'll hit all of these electrons, all of these atoms, and they'll push a lot of current, okay, but at lower speeds. The electrons will move from here to here at a, less, at a slower speed than if they were a high voltage. It would be much, you know, faster. Well, it would do the same distance in a higher speed, so, yeah, i got to keep some of this straight. Um... But it is charge. And so if you can make a machine that uses magnets, okay, that are repelling, put them in the repelling mode, all right, um, that's a much better analogy for the transmission of the movement because it pretty much illustrates exactly what's happening to electrons. Electrons are in pressure. They push on each other because there's crap moving between them. The crap moving between them, obviously, if I, if I have a ping pong ball between two paddles and I move the paddles closer together, well, if I make them half the distance, I've doubled the amount of pressure between them. The impacts, the pressure pushing them apart doubles. So for every, you know, half reduction in the distance, I'm doubling the amount of pressure, voltage, 
uh, between the electrons. And so, yeah. So that's probably enough of a, an outline. But the, the induction is just a symptom. The induction is just a consequence of you producing the electricity. And so you have to have the conductor to have anything that you have to have a dipole <laughs> okay so electrons just flying through space are not creating a field okay they're themselves a a sun and the sun moves from one location to another obviously it's changing what's getting light and what's getting dark okay you know but that's all they're doing they're not changing what they're doing they're doing exactly the same thing you're just saying i'm going to move the sun to a different position Obviously, it's going to be shining light on different places. And if the light was pushing, you could understand it's going to push different things because you've changed the location. So all you're doing to the wire when you electrify it is you're changing the positions of the things producing light. And now the light will hit something else differently and it's going to cause all of its bits to line up with a new arrangement. And then as soon as it has lined up, it all stops. Right? The electricity in the inducting wire stops as soon as it regularizes. As soon as it goes back to staying the same, then all these atoms stay the same. So as long as I'm not changing what's happening in one wire, there isn't going to be any change in the other wire. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's enough. Okay. <clears throat> so, um... Well, I'll pause, and then I guess I'll just do an update video. It's probably enough of an argument. People aren't enough interested in the subject. I mean, they all let Veritasium get away with this crap, and frankly, it's crap. Um, you're you're just you're misleading people if you're going to pretend there's some field going around the wire, or it's going outside the wire, or there's some other thing that's actually pushing the electrons. No. The the pressure is being created by the distance between the electrons, the magnets. The little magnets are creating the field. There is nothing else creating the field that's making the magnets move. You can understand the magnet moves because each magnet has a field radiating from it, and that field is obnoxious to the other magnet. I mean, that's just so obvious. And that's what's moving the electrons. All right, should be back. All right, so on the website, since the last YouTube video, I uh, did do a few videos. The last one was on, just called Push, and it was sort of by request, um, <laughs> you know, in a sense that uh, people sometimes need, they need the, the videos to be more indexable, I guess, is the argument. And so I'm going to try to do that and try to be more explicit in the titles about what I'm talking about. I think I've done that well enough, but whatever. Uh, so, um, so I just talk about why it's a push universe, and it basically has this whole charge argument in it, in a sense. I mean, all there are are the charges, all right? And we know that one of the functions of the charges is the fact that you're going to get repulsion out of them. And um, then you can explain the attraction of gravity as just being an absence of the reciprocal push, okay? So if... If I push two things equally, if I push something from all directions, all right, obviously if I change the amount of push in any one of those directions, it's going to look like a pull, but it's not a pull. It's still being pushed. All right. Uh, then this one was, uh, yeah, so this one was the real by request video. Somebody want to know about thermal velocity and that really gets terminal velocity and that gets to the subject of gravity and that gets to the subject of you know when you combine those two terminal velocity in an atmosphere uh, the subject really is drag and drag is a real thing on all levels of the universe. Uh, so friction and gravity. Oh maybe this was that one. Well whatever. No, the terminal velocity one was about drag, and so this one was about friction and gravity, and the fact that gravity, friction, as we use it most commonly, that is friction along a flat horizontal plane, is an expression of gravity. Without the gravity, there's no friction. Without the thing pushing you into the surface, right, there's no pressure. You have no weight, okay, if I don't have a force pushing you. Um, and so you have to have the weight to create the friction. You have to have the pressure, the forced contact. 
and obviously the more pressure forcing contact the more ability for one thing to give away its energy to the other thing so contact allows there to be an exchange of pressure and I think I even used electricity as an example of <clears throat> The fact that you need good contact for the electricity to get from one wire to another wire. Without good contact, the pressure won't move from one wire to the other wire. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then I did three videos just, you know, arguing really bad, crappy physics that people are arguing for, and it's just annoying. So I did the unsuckers, silly... Let's change the speed of light. That'll solve all our problems. A variable speed of light, which just seems like a non-starter. Where do you have any evidence that light varies? You don't have any. It's just pointless. All right, and then the silly brozo comment. And, uh, well, and Franklin Who was the other one. Yeah, so I did a, you know. Pretty much, yeah, an FU video to Franklin Who because, you know, he's, he was rude and obnoxious and off the subject. And, you know, I, <laughs> we're doing a sermon on what he thinks the truth would look like, which is pointless. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm already uh, a grown-up. I really don't need to be have the, the basics of <clears throat> how you tell crap from not crap. I can do that already. I don't... You know, I, I don't need your advice, um, <clears throat> especially when you're wrong about everything. So he thinks the trick is the explanation, and the trick is is not the explanation, the interpretation. So the trick is the experiments do something, and <clears throat> the obligation is to take that magic trick and explain how the magic trick happened. Why did the, you know, you put two slits in front of a light bulb, and you're saying, look, something weird happens. And the trick, okay, is the experiment. The, the debunker's job is to explain how the trick was performed. Why did that happen? And do that accurately without resorting to mas magical explanations. Well, you know, he makes pigeons. You know, he has a little pigeon making factory. He's breeding them in his shirt and... The, or some kind of crap like that. Some kind of wrong explanation. Anyway. Alright. So. Uh, the real subject is. That um, I'm already. You know. I've already debunked a major element of their physics. I mean just ruined it. It's not viable. And if any one of them. They're just nobody's going to show up. Right. No one's going to show up and have the balls to say. Gary you're wrong about kinetic energy. Because I've shown two fundamental experiments, levers and pressure, that blow it up. That say it can't possibly be true that 10-ton trains going 5 miles an hour have half the energy of 5-ton trains going 10 miles an hour. Because the fact is, I can make the 5-ton train going 10 miles an hour using the energy of the 10-ton train going 5 miles an hour. I can take the thing with half the energy and I can make the thing with twice the energy. So it's obviously not a viable theory, okay, of how reality works. And um, I, have to, I have to force one of these defenders of this crap to um, man up and explain why it's okay that they're selling an idea that's just plainly wrong. The evidence proves it wrong. <laughs> okay. So it's getting to that. Because once that happens, I mean, once it's demonstrated that, oh, Gary was right, and Gary was the only person who was right, <laughs> you know, for the, for the right reasons, um, you know, until that happens, yeah, I'm not going to be treated as a, uh, a human being, <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the rest of these arguments will never be addressed. So, but anyway. It's the way it is. I just still I'll do my job, okay? I'll keep making my arguments and I'll endeavor to persevere and we'll just see if any human being can show up that has anything called integrity. <laughs> yeah. 
that they, any one of them can show up. Any Simon Dan or Moldy Physics or Veritasium or any of these shit talkers can show up, man up, <clears throat> and show that they know what they're talking about. Because, frankly, it'll be shown they don't. And they have to admit it. They're just preaching out of their Bibles. That's all they've done is diligently read their Bible. But they really haven't done anything called thinking or physics or science. They're shitty scientists because <clears throat> they don't force things that are broken. They don't force an explanation. Again, positive and negative are wrongly assigned. And they never fixed it. They never said, oh, come on, we really have to fix this because everything's going to get broken eventually. I mean, this, this wrong assignment of something so elemental is going to create problems. And they just don't fix it. Because even in the Veritasium video, he has amperage going one way and voltage going another way. It's just too silly. Uh, anyway. Current going one way, not amperage. Current going one way. <laughs> yeah, voltage going the other way. Oh, anyway. So, till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Yeah, I think we're done. All right, so till the next time and such, this has been at draftphysics.com. Debate physics also, but nobody, 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 nobody will uh, do what debating requires, which is deal with my actual arguments. Yeah. All right. So, till the next time and such.